Right, so it was very and understood considering its surgical anesthetization. Kindly tell me if you can identify the organ you're looking at. So this is the heart man, the root of the different vessels. Okay, can you please identify all the structures which are labeled? A, please. A is the ascending outer. B, please. B is the right auricle. C is the uh, crystal terminalis. D, please. And D is the uh, cusp of uh, tricuspid valve. H is the quadrant antennae. Okay. G? G. G is the left entry descending artery. Uh, F the... is the left auricle. F? F is the left auricle. And e? e is the pulmonary trunk. Okay, can you please tell me how many cusps does the pulmonary valve have? Three cusps. Okay, can you please tell me the vertical level of the pulmonary valve? Uh, it lies at the level of uh, T6. Yes, and the level of the pulmonary trunk division? Uh, T5. Yes, can you please tell me where would you auscultate for the pulmonary valve? In the left, uh, in the second intercostal space, in the left parasternal area. Okay. Can you please tell me the blood supply of the heart? Yes, the heart is supplied, uh, the artery is supplied mainly from the right and left coronary arteries. Yes. And, uh, and the venous drainage from mainly by the, uh, coron through, by the coronary sinus. It has the... Artery has uh, the left uh, left coronary artery has the an anterior interventricular branch, the marginal branch, and the circumflex branch. The right coronary artery has the marginal branch and the posterior interventricular branch. The coronary sinus uh, has uh, tributaries, the middle cardiac, the, the great cardiac vein in the anterior interventricular group, the middle cardiac vein in the posterior interventricular group, the small cardiac vein on the right side and yes on also some anterior cardiac veins can you please identify structure nine please uh, nine is the pulmonary trunk and seven seven is the infundibulum one please one is the cusp of the tricuspid valve five five is the quadratine and two please two is the papillary muscle can you please identify all the structures labeled here, please? Starting from one, yes. which is one here. Uh, one is the right right atrium. Uh, two, two is here. Two is the two is the right ventricle. Okay, and three, three is, is the here. left left ventricle. Four. Four is the pulmonary trunk. Five, Five is the ascending outer. Six, Six is the superior vena cava. Seven is the brachycephalic trunk. Eight, eight is the left subclavian. Nine is the left, uh, sorry, eight is left common carotid. Nine is left subclavian. Okay, now there are certain uh, number uh, alphabets, if you can look. There is uh, A, B, and this is A, if you can tell me it's some structure, vessel. And then B is, a is the right coronary artery. Okay, B. Uh, B is the left dotted line artery. means it's from the other side, and here you're only seeing the back. Uh, Oops, right I'm coronary sorry. artery. I'm sorry. Okay, and C is here. If you can please identify. C is the circumflex, circumflex artery branch of okay, right coronary and artery. D is here. D is the interventricular, entry interventricular artery or the left anterior e? descending. E is the marginal branch. There is another structure, V. This is the anterior cardiac vein. Okay. Can you please tell me how many layers of the pericardium there are? There are two layers, the fibrous pericardium and the visceral pericardium. Okay. Where is the so, pericardium? Parietal and visceral. There are only two. Okay. Uh, where is the pericardial space and what does it normally contain? Uh, pericardial space, it is the uh, space between the parietal and the visceral layer of the pericardium. 
and it usually contains uh, pericardial fluid. So if you have to do pericardial <coughs> synthesis and the needle from uh, outside to inside will pass which layers? Yes, it will pass uh, skin, uh, then? the skin, then? Uh, skin superficial fascia, then the uh, then the diaphragm. I don't know. Then please the the keep telling me. Yes, until it's peritoneal pericardium. After the per peritoneal pericardium, it enters into the per uh, pericardial space. So, what are the structures which are at risk of damage during pericardial synthesis? It might uh, uh, damage to the uh, it can cause injury to the diaphragm to the lung left lung to the liver left lobe of liver okay in case of uh, fetal life this uh, ductus arteriosus it connects with what Doctor's arteriosus it connects the uh, left uh, left uh, pulmonary left uh, branch of pulmonary trunk to the uh, arch of aorta. In fetal life, this foramen will it serves the function of what? Can you tell me what was the purpose or the function or composition? Foramen ovale it foramen ovale it is the it is a communication between the two atria. What is the most the common, commonest site for coarctation of aorta? Uh, it is usually a distal to left, the origin of left common carotene. All right. In case of adults, this bul bulbous cordis and truncus arteriosus, they are replaced by what structures? Or they correspond to what structures? Mm. Bulbous cord is, I think, the pulmonary trunk and uh, the trunk, the truncus arteriosus, the pulmonary trunk, and uh, bulbous cord is, I can't remember now. Okay, how many layers of pericardium did you say there are? What is the purpose of uh, these layers, the pericardial fluid? What's the purpose of it? How much it should be normally? Uh, usually, it's 30 ml, I think. Okay, what is papillary muscle? Papillary muscles, uh, these are the muscles that uh, uh, anchors the uh, cusp to the quarter tendon to the uh, inner layer of the heart, usually the yeah. ventricle. Yes. Good. There were certain questions, okay, which maybe, right. So need to go over this or you already got it? Yes, I, I got it now. Okay. In case A was ascending aorta, B was the oracle of the right atrium, C was the pectinate muscle, and then D was the quad tendony. Yes. And then E was uh, pulmonary trunk. F was oracle of left atrium. Uh, right. Uh, G was anterior interventricular branch of left coronary artery. And H was papillary muscle. And 50 ml is right. And the fibrous and serous layer. But then uh, it is again divided into parietal and distal. So that's kind of makes it how many layers? Three. Three. Yes. Right. And then, yes, subcostal approach that you'll take. So that can risk puncturate, that can risk uh, puncture, puncture of the liver if the needle is angulated too much inferiorly. <coughs> And then the parasternal, if you do the parasternal approach, so the main risk is puncturing of the lungs. So there are risks of uh, both uh, 
in both approaches, there are risk of damage to the coronary arteries and the atrial and the ventricular walls. That was the risks, uh, right. And the structures you'll go through, there'll be uh, skin, superficial fascia, deep fascia, anterior layer of the rectus sheet, rectus abdominis, the posterior layer of the rectus sheet, diaphragm, endothoracic fascia, fibrous pericardium, and then the parietal layer of the serous pericardium with the 45 degree angle to the skin. Right. Bulbous cordis becomes primitive ventricle and it becomes the ventricle of the heart in adult age. Whereas um, truncus arteriosus gives rise to aorta and pulmonary trunk. Uh, correctation of aorta, you all, I asked you, did you tell me? It can even present with patent ductus arteriosus and occurs uh, where the ductus arteriosus inserts. So I don't common the... side pistol, I don't know. Yeah. So these were the answers. Okay. Yes, good. Ma'am, what is the most common site of uh, coarctation? Postductal or preductal? I just looked and I just looked. Okay, it's the associated with patent ductus arteriosus. And it occurs in the area where the ductus arteriosus inserts. So the narrowing can be preductal, ductal, or postductal, all three. So it usually occurs distal to the origin of the left subclavian artery. So mostly it's distal. Yeah. 